Have you ever noticed those sleek pulsing LED rings on smart speakers, gaming consoles, or even kitchen gadgets? They feel sort of futuristic, don't they? Almost magical. But here's a twist. Recreating that effect is way easier than you'd expect. With a Pico 2, a WS2812B LED ring, and a few lines of code, you can build your own dazzling display. And I'll show you exactly how. Hi, I'm John your concierge to the world of the Raspberry Pi Pico, Pico 2, robotics, IoT, and other fun slices of tech. If that sounds like your kind of adventure, hit subscribe and join the community. We're working with a 24 pixel WS2812B ring today, but don't worry, if you've got a different size, you can tweak the code with a single line. The project is built on a Pico 2 using C++, though a regular Pico works just fine as well. So let's light it up. And hey, if this video sparks inspiration or helps your projects, then consider dropping me a cash tip using that super thanks button below the video, or alternatively, there's a payment link in the description. It helps support this channel and keeps these ideas flowing. Now hit that like button, grab your Pico, and let's get started. This video is sponsored by Wolf SSL. If you're just starting your coding journey, let me introduce you to a name you'll want to remember, Wolf SSL. It's not just a set of libraries, but a backpack full of quality tools. And Wolf SSL packs some serious gear, encryption, authentication, secure connections, I could go on. What sets Wolf SSL apart? It's purpose-built for embedded systems and resource-limited environments. It's used in millions of devices worldwide, from aerospace and automotive to consumer electronics. If you're dreaming of building something that actually ships, this is the kind of library that gets your project battle-ready. Wolf SSL isn't just powerful, it's friendly. The docs are clear, the APIs are simple, and there's support, actually helpful support. And yes, it's open source too, with commercial support available if you want to go pro. So whatever you are building, Wolf SSL helps you write secure code like a pro. So start right, start smart, hit the link, grab Wolf SSL, and put some real security into your project. Because what you build matters, and how you protect it matters even more. So our ring in this LED is based on WS2812B LEDs. They're sometimes called near pixels. Basically, they're seriously connected um, LEDs that we have very few connections going to our Pico. Now, they come in lots of different shapes and sizes. Um, so the ring I'm using is 24, but you can have smaller rings and you can have bigger rings. And they also come in strips and you get some little displays based on them as well. So lots of options. How do we connect these uh, displays up? Well, on the back of these little ring displays, there are two sets of connections with three pins each. One is basically an input to the ring and one's an output of the ring, because you can actually chain these from one ring to another. Now, for today, I'm only going to worry about the inputs. We're not going to connect the output to anything. And on my ring, what I've actually done is soldered some uh, header pins on. They're 2.54 millimeter uh, standard sort of breadboard style header pins. And I've used the right angle ones because that way I can sort of solder it on in such a way that I can easily just clip it straight onto my breadboard. Now, those three pins are basically signal in, which is the digital signal we're going to be sending from our Pico in order to instruct the ring how to light those LEDs. And then power, uh, VCC, the high, um, positive voltage, and then ground. Technically, a WS2812B LED is um, a 5 volt device. And so we should really use 5 volts on it. A Pico, of course, is only 3.3 volts in its outputs. So um, we need to worry a little bit about getting these two things to work together. If you're working with less than about 12 uh, pixels, in your ring or on a strip or something with these WS2812B LEDs, then I normally just don't worry about it and go with 3.3 volts supply, and these will work absolutely fine. As the number of LEDs increases, then you really do need to move to 5 volts 
or it just becomes unstable and doesn't really quite work as you'd expect. So I'm using a 24 pixel ring, which means I am going to use 5 volts. So how do we connect it up? Well, where am I getting 5 volts from? I'm going to take that off of VBus uh, on my Pico 2. Now VBus is actually what's coming in on the USB cable. And I also will take ground directly off the Pico. There are lots of pins I could take ground from. I'm just marking that up here with the one that's closest to VBus really. And I'm going to take the signal out of GP18, which is right down there on the uh, bottom of the right hand side. Now that signal is going to be at 3.3 volts. Now that is a problem for us because I can't really have a 3.3 volts uh, signal when I'm providing 5 volts supply. The supply and the signal really need to be based on the same voltage. So I'm going to convert it. And the way I convert it is to use a logic level converter, which is probably the easiest way to do it. And um, there are lots of these available in generic forms or from companies like Spark Fun. Generally what they have is um, a high side and a low side. So the low side we're going to connect up to 3.3 volts and ground. The high side will connect up to 5 volts and ground. And then we can put something into one of the low inputs and the corresponding high, input, um, high output will get um, uh, the signal going out of it. They're actually bi-directional, so they will work in either direction. In this example, I'm only using it in a single direction. I'm only using one channel, though these often come in, in four channels. Um, I do use some that are only two channels in size. They're actually harder to get hold of. Four channels are much more common. And finally, we are meant to have a uh, resistor between the input coming out of our, our logic level shifter and the uh, ring. And that's meant to be 330 ohms. It will work with different values, somewhere between 220 and 470. In fact, I've accidentally done it without any resistor at all and it works there. But on spec and to reduce voltage and keep it safe, we should put uh, that across there. Now finally, with these sort of rings and large numbers of LEDs, you can have a, a, an interesting brownout problem with your Picos. Now, when you go from no LEDs being lit and therefore no power being driven into this, LED, uh, this ring to let's take all of the LEDs and make them all go white so it's all maximum power draw, it's quite a shift and sometimes power supplies can't keep up. And when they can't keep up, we get brown out on our Picos. And that means that the Pico then restarts and you scratch your head what the hell's going on. So to get over that, and the best thing to do is to add a capacitor. So I'm adding a thousand microfarad capacitor, 16 volt working, and I'm just gonna place it across the um, VCC and ground of this ring. And it's just make sure that there is an additional reservoir of power just to help out should um, it make a radical switch from off to on in state. Now, capacitors, uh, and these are electrolytic capacitors, so they have polarity. You must get them the right way around. Uh, they, if you place these capacitors around the wrong way, they have a tendency to explode. And um, that can be a little bit dangerous with uh, little bits of plastic flying around. So do be careful that you always put electrolytic capacitors around the right way. You're responsible for your own safety. So that will get us to this final board. So to control these uh, LEDs, I'm going to use the Pico LED uh, library from Forsaken NGS. And this is an excellent little library available on GitHub. So the library itself, um, we're just going to have a look at it on GitHub in the browser. So this gives us access to basically initialize. It uses PIO, so we are giving it a little bit of detail around which PIO block it, we want it to use um, and the state machine within that block to use. And then the pin that it's actually connected on and the number of LEDs in the chain. It's pretty easy. There are some great examples to get this set up. And indeed, I'm going to go through one in a second. So, you know, there's lots of well documented here. And then that gives a whole load of function where we can uh, fill the uh, whole strip with a particular color or we can set particular LEDs to, be, uh, to values, which is what we're going to do. 
So my examples over here on GitHub. So here in the repo, I've got my library, Pico LED there, and I've got my source code. Let's just have a look at main. So right at the top of main, I've got two hash defines, which are key. Firstly, the GPIO pin that I'm connecting our LED ring to, which is on 18, and then the number of pixels in our LED ring, which is 24. I say pixels because every one of those pixels actually has uh, a red, a green, a blue, and I think a white actually in there. So that they're, they're actually uh, a number of LED elements in, a, in each of those pixels. So this is the line that actually creates our LED strip object. And it's that Pico LEDs, libraries, LED strip object that we we'll use everywhere. So I'm just creating it. I'm t uh, giving it a uh, PIO bank zero, which is there are two um, PIO banks on a Pico and this is a Pico two. So actually there are three PIO banks. So we're giving it on zero, state machine zero, giving it the pin number, the length, and a uh, format for our, 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 our um, LED strip. So all of the LED strips I've ever used have been the GRB format. And then I can set brightness. Um, actually, I could turn the brightness up higher than that. I've just set it to 64. It's what I've copied, because uh, I sometimes use that for 3.3 volts. Uh, we're using five volts, so I could go a bit brighter, but I've chosen not to. And I'm gonna start by just, um, uh, clearing it by basically showing uh, all of the LEDs to be off. And then we're going to go into a chaser pattern. And uh, the chaser pattern, I'm going to uh, give um, this color of uh, red, basically. So it's going to be a red LED, set up the color for the red. Um, we're, and then I'm just going to put that chaser pattern into my uh, demo count here. And I've got a demo um, uh, array here of three demos. I'm just going to basically store that and I'm going to do that the same thing for Triturn. So I'm going to give Triturn the color blue for our, our LED and uh, set that one up as well. And then finally the dial and I'm going to give that green. So then really all of the code is basically just going through and calling the poll function um, on the uh, demo and uh, uh, animation as it runs through and then when we complete it and I want to move on to the next one I'm just going to reset things. So all of our demos and I've written here all conform to this ring animation um, uh, interface really where I can set the strip, I can set its uh, speed information if I wish to do so I can set the color that I'm using for, and then I can poll it, and I can trigger a reset for it to reset back to its uh, starting step. And um, that's it, really. Um, internally, they also they use a step function to actually do stuff. And uh, it's that doing stuff that I suppose we're interested in. So if I look at um, Ring Chaser, the simplest pattern, it's going to extend that ring animation because it's basically conforming to that interface and um, it's going to then provide its own step pattern and its, its step pattern is basically just to increment the, uh, the number of which LED it's actually lighting and like that one and when the LEDs go over the length it sets them back to zero which causes it to basically keep lighting one LED, red in our case, um, in sequence right around the ring and that's all we're going to do. And the other ones try turn and uh, dial up are basically just derivatives of this and doing very similar things. So that's how I've built the animations. So let's get into the demo and we'll start with the dial where we're dialing up the number of LEDs that are lit, then into a chaser, single LED lit, and then three LEDs lit in our tri chaser basic pattern. Now I went through all of that quite quickly. If you want to go through this a bit more slowly, and see some other very similar projects, then why not check out my Raspberry Pi Pico micro projects course over on the Udemy platform. And I'll leave a voucher in the description as well for a limited time only. These WS2812B LED rings make an appearance in a lot of my projects. From my lightsaber wall light to Rexby One, 
I use them as they add atmosphere and are so easy to work with. Check out my other projects. If this video helps you out or sparks ideas for your own projects, consider supporting me with a super thanks donation below the video, or alternatively, there is a payment link in the description. I'm saving these up for my trip to open source in San Francisco, and every contribution brings me one step closer. And I'd love to meet you all there too. Thank you again for watching. If you enjoyed this, then please do give it a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe so you don't miss the next video. And if you want more LED projects, then check out these ones over here, or let me know in the comments what other things you'd like to see, and I can bring them to you. Catch you on the next video. Bye-bye for now.